So, Michael, we have some good news and some bad news. Uh, well, good news for men, I guess. Bad news for women. So, firstly, okay. what, what do you want first? What do you want first? Um, let's start with the uh, the good news for men. Yes, good news for men. The most important thing. We are men. We support all things men. And uh, the Batman is officially getting a sequel. So there Ooh. you have it. The Batman starring Robert Pattinson, of course, is officially getting uh, a sequel. Um, and you know, obviously, it got like eighty six percent on Tomatoes, grossed like seven hundred sixty million dollars worldwide. So yeah, you, that's that's good, isn't it, Michael? A good win for men, right? And and Batman. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, so now, bad news for women. Uh, Bat <laughs> Batwoman has been cancelled after three seasons. Oh, well, to be fair, three seasons isn't isn't terrible. Uh, yeah, know? I mean, you need. I think you need at least five for it to be like a decent. For it to be impressive, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I didn't even know there was a show called Batwoman. But there was, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So uh, and yeah. now, we're, now, now, knowing that it's so short, we might as well watch it. I mean, three seasons—that's barely anything. You don't even lose any time by watching it. Wow, yeah, I, I know. Conversely, if it were like five seasons, I'd be like, oh, that's too much. Do I really want to invest the effort? So maybe this is a good. Well, thing. it has been cancelled, so it's probably pretty shit. Um, or you know, it's it's really good, but because it's about a woman. Yeah, misogyny. Yeah, nobody's watching. So yeah, good, good win for us, Michael. Men stay winning. Yes, finally. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Select and Reflect, the movie review podcast where we look at films that have come out in the near and distant past, we give them a couple of watches and evaluate them beyond first impressions. I'm your host Michael and I'm joined as always by my co-host Luke and this week we are celebrating the release of Doctor Strange in, or it might be and, the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, And of course we're going to be looking at, to celebrate that, um, Doctor Strange full stop just that's it um so luke why don't you tell us a thing or two about doctor strange it is a 2016 american superhero film based on the marvel comics character of the same name a marvel comics superhero film not that strange really is it i oh, say yeah. yes produced by marvel studios and distributed by walt disney as well it is the huh. 14th film in the marvel cinematic wow. universe the 14th of course released almost six years ago michael six years ago it's, it's crazy how this was i remember at the time this was when marvel was really like kicking into the gear when you could well, we'll yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go through we'll go through the box office in a bit uh, anyway yeah. so the movie was directed by scott derrickson um based on doctor strange by stan lee and steve ditko stars benedict come on my back uh to feel uh, uh four rachel mcadams benedict wong um is that his actual two benedicts yeah, I know. And the crazy thing is... His uh, name is Wong. His name is Wong in the actual Marvel Cinematic Universe. Maybe just the the writers were so, like, uninspired with their Chinese name. They're like, well, yeah. who are we casting for this role? A guy called Benedict Wong. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a fine surname. Wong. Yeah. Uh, Michael Stuhlbarg, who's not in the movie a lot, I have to say. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's really funny that he's, like, you know, obviously quite quite a big actor. Yes. Benjamin Bratt. Um, Scott Adkins. Mads Mikkelsen, he's finally there. And then Tilda Swinton. Huh, Tilda yep. Swinton. Wait, wait a minute. It says Tilda Swinton is a British actress, not Tibetan. Wow. What? Uh, anyway, the release date for this movie was November the 4th, 2016 in the United States. Actually, Michael, can you guess where when it premiered? When it premiered. Oh, sorry. No, not when. Which city? Um, Which city? Uh, Nepal. No. Is it like an East Asian city? It is, yes. Okay, uh, maybe Hong Kong? Yes, well done. See, hey. yeah, sometimes you can work stuff out. Well done. Uh, so, uh, the budget, Michael. Have a guess what the budget was for this movie. Yeah, the budget what the hell was, was that? that was me not realizing that I don't really have any idea. Well, I mean, like, obviously, I you know should have like, some idea. Well, it's, I think it's going to be like around a hundred million. Um, and I feel like probably if, it, if I went for a hundred million, I probably couldn't go wrong because I feel like it's you know, it's got to be around that. So, yeah, I guess I guess I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just gonna say a hundred million. Well, you again, you guess under. Which is yeah. hilarious how much how, how often you guess under, but it is not more than half, unfortunately. Well, I'm, I'm interested to see exactly how much I'm off. So the budget was 165 million to wow. 236 million. Yeah, you'd think with all the special effects, it would be at least 50 million more, but you, you're in you live in your own world, Michael. Um, and yeah, I, I think obviously the 236 is probably including marketing because, yeah, like 236 just. For, for making a film is a lot. Yeah, especially this movie, which 
is like the the maximum budget you see for movies nowadays is two hundred million. Like Fantastic Beasts, that was two hundred. Yeah. The Batman, that was two hundred. Yeah. It would also. I mean, it's worth noting that like the thing about this film, the kind of funny thing is that I actually think this film to me feels kind of cheap. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of it is inside. And what I yeah, I but there's so much in... special effects. That's yeah, yeah, so, I know, yeah. So but, many yeah. special effects, and to be fair, the special effects are actually quite decent compared to, for instance, yeah. for instance Spider-Man. Yeah, they look too cheap. Spider-Man yeah. No Way Home, which if you've seen the special effects on that, it's it's crazy. But anyway, uh, so the yeah. budget's 236. I have to think that includes marketing because it's Doctor Strange movie back in 2016. Uh, I don't think they'd just give just to produce the movie 236 yeah. so i'm guessing the actual budget to produce the movie was 165 which means of course what's half of 165 michael uh it's 82.5 um, uh, 82.5 yes and easy so you were just 18 million off from getting another mark against your name uh but yeah you still get way under the budget but not under enough obviously with the rules that we've established maybe we should make another rule if you okay it's, if it's not under but you guess like more than 50 million off you know, it's not um, less yeah. Because than... to be fair, it is easy for me. Like when you get to these huge numbers, yes. it's much easier for me to. Uh... Yes. So if it's not less than half, but still fifty million off, maybe we should institute that rule. I, I, I'll see. I'll see how how things go with that in the future. But anyway, Michael, can you guess the box office for Doctor Strange? No. Um, again, here I also don't really have like a clear idea because obviously, like Marvel was big, as you said. The flip side is, you know, obviously I don't think this did as well as many other films like obviously the avengers or like the captain americas like obviously i mean captain america civil war came out around this time and i would imagine that made over a billion um, yeah several months earlier yeah 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 and like based on that like i mean i don't think i, I want to go for ah, i want to go for like 800 million oh not that high but still a decent guess the box office was 677 million okay. yeah yeah 677 million um, I think that that is still quite impressive for a Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, yeah. You said to somebody, obviously in two thousand and six, like ten years prior, that a Doctor Strange movie would be making, you know, almost seven hundred million dollars at the global box office. They would be like, "What? No, no way!" But that just shows how how powerful the Marvel Cinematic Universe is, and that's what I mean by the Marvel Cinematic Universe really kicking into gear around this yeah. time. Because you have, of course, had the Avengers movie, then Civil War, and you could create like you could have these movies like Ant Man and Doctor Strange, which before were you know bottom bottom of the barrel characters, and you could have those movies gross you know hundreds of millions of dollars and yeah. easily make a a big profit in the hundreds of millions. So this was when. This this movie was evidence that oh yeah the Marvel Cinematic Universe this is a real this is a real thing which can not not only are fans going to see the big movies but also the little movies or the smaller movies yeah, yeah. Not, they're not little the smaller movies that they're gonna gonna go see that too and you know this next movie Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness probably gonna gross close to a billion I'd imagine which is uh, crazy for a Doctor you know Strange sequel but you know um. I guess that's just how powerful Marvel is, but well, we'll see on that. But anyway, Michael, uh, did you like Doctor Strange? Um, not. Uh, uh, I thought it was pretty boring. Like the thing is, it was kind of inoffensive. Is is where I'm at. So it's kind of like there was nothing horrendously bad. But as far as like Marvel films go, like I already kind of said, this to me almost felt like a TV thing. It like felt like it lacked the scope of a movie. Like it almost felt like. It, yeah it just to me it was actually quite boring like i was like compared to many of the other marvel films around this time uh, i actually found this film uniquely kind of just yeah okay i disagree actually i thought this was a one of the better marvel movies that i've seen <gasps> gasp this we is, disagree i mean the thing is i mean to be fair i'm thinking of like the bad marvel movies and i'm like oh this is a lot better but even for instance spider-man what was it far from home that was it. Yeah. That one which we watched recently, the 2019 one. This is a better movie than that, in my opinion. Um, I guess it's helped by it being an origin movie and you've got an inbuilt character arc, which you kind of have to have in an origin movie. But I, I just enjoyed it because it wasn't like over the top in its marvel Enus. Like there are some quips and some... Well, not really quips. There's some like, like jokes, but it's quite a serious movie on the whole. And I don't know. I just kind of enjoyed that compared to what you usually see from Marvel um certainly yeah I, I can kind of see that logic because yeah i do kind of agree with you this felt less like a typical marvel film um yeah like i do agree with that yeah and i i i enjoyed it because of that i guess there are still some issues but there are some parts that i did like and obviously we'll get it we'll get into that so michael how many nitpicks do you have i have one nitpick okay i have two so you go first yeah uh basically just 
why and okay so the fact that the sanctum is in new york um like the logic of that i just like it's not like exactly wrong but he's like oh uh or wong you could say <laughs> but he says like oh he put these like different sanctums in all of like these places where great cities would form and like there's one in new york one in london one in hong kong and i'm like if you want to do like you know kind of roughly like thirds across the earth why not go for like an ancient mayan city or something like shichen itza or uh Uks- or whatever it's called because they're like not one of those... they're not great cities no but i don't know like I, it just like it's because i think i guess the thing is like their logic is, is like where great cities would form which like yeah. To, it just seems like that like implies the logic there would almost imply that like this guy put those sanctums there because it implies like the implication is this is like some ancient like historic order or something so like when did he put the sanctums there um, uh, was he I like mean, oh new york city this place is going to be big i guess what he did was he because he has the time stone so he can see into the future so he saw oh there's going to be a great city built here so i'll build mm. i'll put the sanctum there that's what he was mm. thinking I suppose that makes sense, but yes. you know, it's a good thing he didn't go into the uh, the New York in the seventies. Then he would have gone, "Oh, this place is horrible." <laughs> well, again, yeah, it is horrible, but it's still literally the biggest city. Yeah, yeah I'm surprised. I mean, I guess if you you were following this logic, then Tokyo should surely be one of them. Yeah, um, I guess really, I just felt like, in a way, I would have preferred it if they had slightly more. Um, I also feel I don't know. I also feel like I don't want to say I don't want to imply this film could have like some weird things going on with race, but I kind of feel like. It just to me feels like it's it's being a bit mean to pre-Columbian civilizations to be like you know come on you know like it's not their fault they were genocided just just throw them that bone let them no but they weren't great cities what's the population of well Tenochtitlan the thing is like Tenochtitlan actually was at a time the largest city what was its what was its population it was like okay I don't know I mean I don't like the thing is like relative to the world let's let's give it let's give it a million still about twenty five yeah percent but. No, 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 sorry, percent, 25 times less than New York City. Like, these you know great what, cities of the past, nowhere near compared to modern cities. But actually, here's the thing. Tenochtitlan, I assume you know, Mexico City was built on the on the ruins of Tenochtitlan. Yes, I do. And that has 9 million people, which is pretty I pretty think, big. doesn't you, New York still have more? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, the thing about New York is don't they have, like, an absurdly large... Like, it depends how you're defining it. Oh, yes, it's the like, whole how you define cities, but New York is more influential as well than Mexico City, yeah, of course. Yeah, so fine. that has yeah, to I'm be... Sorry. Yeah, you're right, you're right. White European civilization deserves two cities. That's where um, that's where the United Nations is. That's where the United Nations is. So, yeah, maybe that's what he, he felt like. Oh, where where is the cultural centre of the Western world? I was in New York, but... Okay. I don't know why... What's not explained is why he put these sanctums in these cities. Like, why... Surely, like, if the sanctum gets attacked... You yeah. want it in a populated area yeah that's a good point yeah, yeah. actually he's he's yeah what a lunatic anyway, joke uh so let's go into some nitpicks now um so uh for, for me of course so uh dr strange picks up um the one book which mads mickelson's character which is of course well what's he called <laughs> michael mads mickelson's evil character oh oh um, it's like pycelius no kaiselius 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 Caecilius. So you were quite close. Well done. Caecilius stole pages out of. So like he goes to look at the books. Oh, that just happens to be the book Caecilius stole pages out of. Maybe it was magic yeah. that told him to pick that book up. Maybe it was the force. <laughs> yes. Why does Caecilius only steal a handful of pages and not the whole book? Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Especially because it's like often quite difficult to kind of rip a page out neatly. Like imagine if you done that thing where he's like trying to rip it out and yeah, yeah. just like accidentally rips the page in half. And he's like, damn it, does anyone have any sellotape? Yeah, that would be a fun scene. Maybe yeah, that would be a yeah, that would have been that would have been a good yeah, a good little uh, classic Marvel scene. Yeah, that been. exactly. That would be a Marvel. But you don't get those in this movie, which I I, I like. It's just a, it's just a breath of fresh air, I guess. Maybe it's just a breath of fresh air compared to Spider Man, because the two most recent Marvel movies I have seen are both Spider Man movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Far From Home and, of course, No Way Home, which I saw a few weeks ago. Anyway, so let's get into the concept of this movie, Michael, uh, or, or the plot, I guess, really, because, you know, it's a, it's a superhero origin story for this Doctor Strange character. That's the concept. Um, and this is from Wikipedia. Strange learns the mystic arts after a career-ending car crash. Yes. Well that, done. Simple enough. Um, and But the very legal website I use has a more elaborate description. After his career is uh, is destroyed, a brilliant but arrogant surgeon gets a new lease on life when a sorcerer takes him under her wing and trains him to defend the world against evil. Um, and that's the thing; it's an origin story that is standard. Uh, and you know, they basically this guy learns about this new world, this magical world it happens to be, and yes. then confronts 
the bad guy at the end of the movie and wins. You know, he has a, a character arc as well. The mentor dies, of course. Um, fucking Tilda Swinton. And yeah, all that stuff happens and it's a standard superhero origin story. So again, I'm not saying like I'm in love with this movie because it is very standard, very by the book. But there are some nice parts which I appreciate in it, which I, I, I do feel like the screenwriters, like they did really all they could. That's that's the essence I got from this movie. It's like they, they really did all they could trying to make this, trying to stick to, again, a very generic um, superhero origin story formula and, you know, and, and trying to make things as, I guess, interesting as as they could, which we'll get into. But uh, you anything more to say on the plot, Michael? Um, No, not just on the bit, yeah, not on the just introduction, but obviously... Obviously, I assume we'll talk more about the specific beats of the plot yes. later on. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, so um, Strange, um, of course, isn't in the first scene, because we, we go to Kathmandu first. The sorcerer Cassilius and his zealots enter the secret compound Kamartage and behead its librarian. They steal a few pages from an ancient mystical text belonging to the Ancient One, a long-lived sorcerer who has taught every student at Kamartage, including Cassilius, in the mystic arts. The Angel One pursues the traitors, but Cassilius and his followers escape. Um, obviously one of those scenes that you have to set up the movie, you know, this is what the uh, the conflict is going to be. And uh, I, I, I'm just interested, do you, do you know this? Obviously, you, wh- where was that first scene actually filmed, Michael, one, once they go through the, t- the portal thing? Uh, I don't know. What city did they go to? Come on, you must know. Oh, when they first go through the portal thing? Yeah. Is it is it London? It is London, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, do, do you know, and I, I saw Doctor Strange, obviously the, the, the sequel is filming in London as well. It's not because Cumberbatch is English, by the way. Uh, wh- why, yes. why why do Marvel like filming in London? Um, Because of all the Russian money they can get their hands on. No. Is, if, there, is, there like an, is there like an obvious reason? There is a reason. Why do they film, why do they film in Britain and not America? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, why? Why? Well, it's because of the weather, Michael. Okay, it's... I was kind of wondering about that. But well, like, oh, yeah, because, like, oh, of, course you okay. of course you were. No, okay. Of course you were. Okay, can I, can, I, can I speculate about this? is what I was wondering. The thing is, I think I'm probably wrong, but I was thinking it was because of like the fact that like um, the weather means. I, I think this is definitely wrong, but like they don't really have to worry about like the golden hour because it's like they don't have to worry about the sun as much because it's constantly overcast. Yes. Because one of the reasons. Is that why? Yes. Okay, yeah, because like obviously I know one of the reasons why like filming outside is expensive is because like you need to do it fast because if the sun moves too much, then you end up with continuity errors. But in the UK, there is no sun, so it's fine. Yes, but it's not really because of continuity errors, though. What's what's another reason why Marvel would like to film in cloudy areas? Because uh, they they like they like uh, grey um, color schemes. Yes, they actually do. But why do they like that? Um, I I I don't know. Because right, it, it makes it more like gritty. Makes realistic. it makes something easier. Uh, CGI. Yes, makes the CGI easier. Oh, because like they don't have to worry about like the shadows of the sun. Exactly. It, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. I got, got you. you. Yes. So that's why they're filming. Lo- that's why that scene was in London. That's why a lot of the scenes are indeed um, in London, uh, or at least filmed in London. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I think that you know the, where, where Strange is in New York. I believe like that sh- that sh- is filmed in London. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. It can you can easily make a fucking London or a, sorry a New York street or oh, sorry a London street look street, like it's like a New, New York. York street. Yeah. Yes, got it. I got it eventually. Yeah. So yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, but anyway, so in New York City or London, um, <laughs> Stephen Strange, a wealthy, acclaimed, and arrogant neurosurgeon, um, you know, is um is is introduced and you know it does well to establish his character early on. You know, the story does a good job. Although Rachel McAdams didn't have to say, you know, so explicitly, it's always about you, Stephen. Like that's what she said. It's mm, like yeah, yeah. Okay. you didn't really need to say that, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. their like kind of relationship at the beginning, like I, I did find the characterization of Doctor Strange at the beginning like very um, uh, yeah, kind of like it's just it felt very like kind of lame, I guess, like kind of cheap um, in a way. I don't know no, if it feels lame. I, I just think it's like it's it's standard stuff. And what I do appreciate is you get to know his character, who he is extremely yeah. early on and quickly. It feels a lot like, um, you know, House, the TV show. I haven't really yes. watched it very much at all, but just like that, uh, like he's like the doctor and he's a genius, but he's kind of an arsehole. Yeah, but, but... The, 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 the difference is to House. House is kind of like a troubled genius. This guy really isn't like that. So that's that's the difference. 
Um, and you know, like you said, he you know he's a brain surgeon. And he thinks he's a god, basically, and that's a common trait with doctors. And uh, what I, of course, it makes sense. I guess this is what happens in the comics. His arrogance costs him. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but some people have said he's too much like Iron Man. Yeah, I've it. I've heard uh, I've heard like the criticism that Doctor Strange feels like very much a rehash of kind of the same character tropes of other like marvel superheroes he's just the thing is he's different to iron man in that he isn't like iron man has well tony stark has swag i guess to use that word um doctor strange yeah he's more like a kind of anti like doctor strange is more anti-social than iron man yeah yeah exactly like he likes you you think he likes to keep himself to himself more uh and you know iron man isn't really humbled in the uh and that's what probably makes iron man's character arc a bit better in the actual uh, in the first Iron Man in two thousand eight, he isn't really humbled. Well, he he he's captured and obviously like he's kidnapped, but that doesn't necessarily ma- mean that he's like humbled. You know what he changes yeah. his ideals when he sees the devastation that his rockets or missiles have caused. This guy, yeah, he is he is well because he's not in. I guess he doesn't make rockets or uh, he's a surgeon, so that so he has to take a different character arc, which is oh I'm humbled and then he re- rebuilds himself into a better person. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so. An issue I have is he lives in New York and then he goes to this neurological conference, which for some reason isn't in New York. You would think that if he's yeah, going... like because he's like driving through like kind of like not very New Yorky roads. Yeah, it, it looks like he's driving through like a kind of California style road. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking like the Mediterranean, that kind of road, like a you know like, yeah, yeah, uh, windy he... cliffside road. Yeah, windy cliffsides, which isn't really in New York, and yeah. you know he. Looks... But then he is rushed to hospital in New York. That's isn't he? Re- so that... literally what I was going to say. Since he's yeah. driving on a road that looks like he's near some mountain range, you know, fine, whatever. It's pretty far from New York. Maybe there is some road that exists like that. But then after his accident, he's taken to the same hospital he works at in New York City. Uh, surely yeah. there will be a closer hospital to him um yeah doesn't... yeah that is a bit weird yeah that doesn't really need to happen either I, it, it, is it just so like Ra- he can we can have the shot of rachel mcadams looking down at him as he's you know going into the operating theater and he sees her is it just for that shot yeah 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 i mean I d- yeah i didn't know maybe yeah uh, anyway i really like um the point in the movie of course where stevens gets humbled you know um, fellow surgeon christian Christine Palmer tries to help him move on, that's Rachel McAdams, but Strange yeah. mainly pursues experimental surgeries to heal his hands. You know, he can't cope, obviously, with not being this god, yeah. who, which makes sense, and Cumberbatch does a good job showing the tall man. Actually, talk about Cumberbatch's accent first, Michael. Do you think it's a good accent? I thought at some points it sounded a bit weird. Like, there was one point where he, like, said a word, and I kind of, like, just instinctively, like, repeated that. Like, I paused the thing just to repeat how he said it to myself, because I, I found it funny. And I can't remember what the word was, though. But it was, like, it was kind of like, it was almost like it was, the way he said it was, like, too deep. Like, it sounded like, it was kind of yeah. like, like, his, his attempt at an American accent was just, like, a really it's, deep version of, like, a weird accent. It's a good way to try and hide your accent by speaking yeah. deeply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like, oh my god. I don't know, like, was, I don't know what it is, but he actually said it was like that. I'm Dr. S- Stephen Strange. I'm Doctor Strange. I've I've come to bargain. Oh yeah, I've come to bargain. I've come to bargain with you. Yeah, yeah. It's like because obviously, yeah, you can just disguise it more if your voice is deeper. That's why, why I think. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, but yeah, so he does an okay job at the accent. But anyway, I have to say the the thing is with like, like going back to oh him being humbled, and you know he vainly pursues these surgeries to heal his hands. It's very not very Marvel, and this is the part of the movie which maybe I like the most because it's not very Marvel. Like he, I like the shot where he steps on the paper where he's tried to write his own name. You know, there aren't any quips or jokes. It's a very serious, depressing part of of the movie, and I'm like, oh, this is good. Like genuinely, you f- you can feel how hurt he is by the situation. And again, maybe yeah. it's just because I've seen so many fucking Spider Man shit. Like that that, is, that scene feels so far from Spider Man stuff, and it will probably be as well very far from the new. Uh, Doctor Strange movie as well. Yeah, because that won't have that like. I mean, yeah, it is. It's yeah, serious, I do agree. Mike. It starts off very grounded. Yeah, it's serious and grounded. Uh, apart from the first scene, of course, with the, yeah, with them fucking, you know, yeah. jumping over buildings in the mirror dimension or whatever. Yeah, yeah I, I think I guess one of the issues I have uh, is that it kind of makes it feel a bit like um, a bit like mismatch, and I think part of it is like I struggle to maybe appreciate that um, that like grounded beginning because I do ultimately know that this is first of all this is part of a universe that is like super ridiculous but even that this film eventually gets pretty ridiculous so i i think yeah there's a a difference between ridiculous 
and ex I, I don't want to say experimental because it's not experimental but just crazy which this yeah. movie does get at one point just with the, the graphics and just what happens at the end of the movie which is a very weird way to end a movie it is um, especially Marvel movie which we'll get onto yeah and it's of course it's the complete opposite of grounded like it's the complete opposite yeah. but yeah it's um it, it's it, I, I, do, I do like this bit I, I do I have to say I do uh but uh let's get into well how does Stephen Strange learn about Kathmandu Michael bit of bs oh, yes bit, bit of bs you know benjamin bratt who of course was in another great superhero movie which one michael um oh i i recognize him is he from like i feel like i'm wrong about this is he from aquaman no i'm like totally crazy yeah okay you might as well just tell me i i, I did recognize his face but not in such a way that i would just be doing anything other than guessing random superhero films a 2003 movie one we're going to review next year hopefully Oh, is it uh two thousand three? Is it as like an X Men? Not X Men. Uh, uh, Spider Man? No. Nope. Or is that not two thousand and three? Eh. What the hell came out in two thousand? Oh, Catman. Cat. Uh, sorry, Cat. Wow. Cat Woman. Cat... <laughs> it's a female led superhero movie, and you automatically think it has to be a male superhero. I know that is so funny, Cat. Well, it's cause I was thinking of Catman do. Um, <laughs> but no. Okay. Yeah. 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 Catman. Because he he is like Cat Woman. Is he... Sorry, Catwoman. <laughs> is he the guy that she does the sexy um, basketball with? Yes. Well, yeah. He's, he's one of the main characters. In, That's in the probably movie. why I recognise his face. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, he's a uh, he's a detective in the <laughs> in the movie, and of course that incredible basketball scene, which will hopefully live on through generations. Everyone, when Benjamin Bratt dies, I hope that video is shared on Twitter. Um, unless Elon Musk has already destroyed it by then, maybe I don't know. But anyway, so um, yeah, he tells um Stephen about this strange about this place, and he does it pretty easily as well, considering Strange fucked him over by not operating on him. But whatever. Um, I guess since they both live in New York City, which is of course a big metropolitan area, there is there is a chance that Stephen could somehow, some way, come into contact with another person who went to this far off land in Nepal and got you know their spirit healed. So yeah, I don't, I don't really mind that too much, Michael. What it would uh, no, I, I don't mind it actually. Like yeah. I think that like idea of uh, you know you can control your body with your mind. Well, just just as how he finds like, out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I think it kind of makes sense because obviously he's like he's talking about it being hopeless, and then the guy says the whole thing about like um yeah, uh, and obviously it kind of works in with like the whole thing of um I guess you could say like Doctor Strange has like limited perceptions about what's possible, um, and that obviously plays into the fact that like he views some people as untreatable. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it all kind of works together quite well, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, and yeah, I think you know, just from a logical or practical point of view, like, oh, how come other people don't know about this? Oh, well, you yeah, know, it's like one guy had this experience, and like they, he only knows that this fucking doctor who's working with Strange only knows about him because he saw him walking, and of course, it was such a rem- remarkable turnaround that he n- notes it, you know, like he remembers it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like it's it's not the worst way for strange to encounter this incredible world you know i guess Um, yeah so yeah the uh, the real issue is when benjamin bratt says to him that you know my spirit was elevated and that helped you know that helped me that fixed me and strange basically at the basketball court accepts that you know i like how benjamin bratt's character is playing basketball to show yeah oh this guy's completely healed you know that's good uh but obviously then when he gets to katmandu uh, and the fucking kamal taj he thinks all this spirit stuff is BS. Yeah, that is a bit confusing. Like, it's kind of like I. It almost seems like he, he like when when the guy said his his spirit, like when you know um, Pratt was talking, uh, he was like, "Oh, I'll just not really." Like it was almost as if like he didn't really pay attention to what he was saying, and then suddenly he goes all the way to Kathmandu, and he's like, "Oh wait, th- that th- what he actually said is is what you actually do? That's crazy. It makes no sense." Yeah, I mean, he's travelled thousands of miles to get to this place in Nepal, and he said, like, his last dollar, even though I think that's a bit of bullshit, because obviously he's very rich, it doesn't take that yeah. much money to get to Nepal, uh, which is known, you know, and you think of Nepal, like, it's known for its spiritualness, I guess. Yeah. Then this ancient one says to him that, you know, uh, she can reorient the spirits to better heal the body, and, you know, that's what Brat told him, you know, about his spirit being elevated and helping his body and strange is like i don't believe in fairy tales about chakras or energy or the power of belief i mean i get you have to do this because you of the character arc you know convince this man of 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 science that magic exists you know essentially and get into like you said michael what was it like open his perceptions of the world yeah yeah like i i think i say like limited 
ideas of what was possible or something like that yeah i actually i wrote by the way and i want to mention this now there was one point where i thought he sounded like kevin sorbo uh in um <laughs> in god's not dead it's like he's like he's like um reality is all there is all there is is science we're just matter there's no spirituality and like i kind of expect him to be like there's no god how could any god let uh, somebody die of cancer even while the boy is praying for his mother to be alive like that she sounded like kind of like literally like it sounded like uh, an angry atheist from a pure fix film i found that really funny <laughs> yeah it's just matter that's the only thing well, that exists th- that's, the thing, that's what he's saying like yeah. but yeah, my, he's come all this way on the yeah. on the the um on the word of Benjamin Bratt saying no, your spirit heals yourself, and he's like no, that all that all that is bullshit. You can't have him come all this way knowing what would be awaiting him, and still have him you know dismiss what the ancient one is telling him. I mean that's that's yeah. ridiculous. You can have him be a bit skeptical, and you know I, that's what I remember when I first watched this movie. It was it was back in probably twenty seventeen. We're talking like five years yeah. ago. And I remember that scene, and I was really confused. I was like, what the fuck? He just accepted it when he was talking to that guy on the basketball court, and now he's like, oh no, there must be some medical reason. It's like, what the, what the fuck? What the fuck? Maybe maybe mm. he just was didn't believe what Benjamin Bratt Maybe said. Maybe the plot is he's such an asshole that he wasn't like paying attention at all. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> he was just, he, like, just like not really listening to him, like, oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he didn't believe what Benjamin Bratt was telling him. Just like he he told like he was, they should have communicated that if that was the case. But right, okay, yeah. Look, just I, get I mean, me to Nepal and then I'll believe whatever he tells me, so he'll tell me where I need to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like obviously the thing is like it's clear that the guy actually is healed. So I guess he's like, well, this guy must be healed. So even if what he's saying sounds like nonsense, yeah, clearly that should have person... been communicated though. Like he actually, yeah, no, yeah, it's I, I agree with you. And yeah, then yeah. this then this scene would make more sense when he's just dismissing it out of hand. Yeah, that's the thing. He goes, there's no such thing as spirits which if he actually thought given you know he'd never go to Kathmandu in the first place so um i get what they have to do you know they have to make him you know with the character art convince this guy oh no there's so much more that you don't know but yeah you got to do it better than how you did it anyway so uh then of course strange goes on what seems like a massive trip one of several in the movie um, yes of course he references did you lace my tea with lsd before or something yeah that's and a uh, controversial mentioning drugs in your family film wow in a marvel movie yeah that's well pr- crazy but it's it's great like the hands upon hands thing is it's fun yeah and the thing is, that I, actually made me shiver when i was <laughs> like i was watching it and i kind of like shivered yeah again this is what i'm talking about it being so different to what you normally see from marvel like this is yeah yeah i do like that like yeah. the way it is quite creative with the um yeah exactly like you can't call these scenes boring they're visually interesting and the new strange movie again will have some of that as well um and yeah i i think again you know it's um you, you call your movie doctor strange you expect some of these strange scenes and it, and it and it delivers um and yeah it's uh a bit, some of the sh- scenes later on are a bit like inception you know with how the cities bend and all that shit and of course you know that i mean it's it's still fun to watch but it's like oh that's very inception-esque this one is like when he's just fucking the hands and just going through the eyes it's like that must have been really fun to come up with like what we're gonna have yeah Doctor strange do in these scenes and yeah then- like i liked how kind of like they made it sort of almost like abstract imagery uh yeah. which i guess shows the fact you're like in this weird kind of like it's a good way of showing like alternate dimensions rather than having it be like anything kind of discernible it's just like all of these weird images yeah and again what i like is it's so different again from what you normally yeah. get from from marvel uh even though as time's gone on of course if you've seen no way home there is you know those kind of scenes because Doctor Strange is in the movie, so maybe that's to be yeah. expected. Yeah. Anyway, so um, Strange, here's the thing: he should have maybe a better motivation, like a better character arc moment that convinces him to stay and want to learn. Like he just shouts, like, yeah. He just shouts, "Teach me!" After the Ancient One shows him everything, he just like teach me. Like it said, yeah. You know, he's then it, there should be like a moment where he's like, "Oh shit, wow!" And then like has a conversation with her and like. Yeah, he, he changes to... his opinion pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, and you get st- and you slowly get stuff out of him, and he slowly realizes what he is, uh, or what he, what why he's here, what he um what he wants to do, what he wants to become. It's just like quite a, an instant change, and I guess you would maybe expect that because of an incredible experience like like that. So, but you know, he it's it like you said, it feels a uh, it feels a bit too quick, and uh, you could have you could have done a better job there. But let's talk about the ancient one now, Michael. Yes. What? Uh... What what ethnicity is is Tilda Swinton? Ah, uh, uh, this is a tough one, but I believe that uh, she might be uh, wh- white. White, Caucasian. I believe she might be Asian, Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so this I remember seeing this at the time, back yeah. again when I first watched the movie in twenty seventeen. Again, I hadn't, I had, I knew nothing about the movie. I just came in blind, and again, one of my first experiences, again, the stupidness of fucking Doctor Strange, like, oh yeah, I'll go to Kathmandu because of my spirit, and then spirits, the spirit thing is bullshit. As he gets there, that stuck out in my mind, and another, and another thing that stuck out in my mind was the fact that this ancient one was being played by a bold white woman. Um, Tilda, yeah. Sw- Tilda fucking Swinson, who is of course British. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, it should point out, isn't this similar to? And this isn't like uh, excusing it, but like uh, it's similar to how Liam Neeson plays uh, Raz Al Ghul in uh in the League of Shadows, which is also like a wise master. Um, it is indeed. It yeah, is indeed. So Hollywood just can't help themselves. Wise kung fu master, obviously, got to be a white person. Yeah, I guess the the difference there is. Ra's al Ghul has ascended to the head of the League of Shadows, whereas this person has been in Asia for thousands of years, or in Nepal for thousands yeah, of years. Yeah, but she just know. happens to be white. Yes, and she just had, like, Ra's al Ghul fucking, he, you know, he's just, I imagine in the League of Shadows, because they seem to be like an international organization. Yeah. Yeah. They're it's based like, in Asia, but he's just like, yeah, he just worked as, you know, it's just like any old white guy getting a job in Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess his appearance is meant to seem Asian. I guess that's the criticism yeah. you can level at it. Yeah. I mean, I think he's supposed to be Arab in the comics, which was, would kind of make sense of his name, like Ra's al Ghul, like he's got Al in his name. Yes. But anyway, so t- they say at one point she's a character. Celtic mystic. So yes, like, yes, I did hear that. Ah, no, no. Oh, well, well, isn't it weird that she's white and she's hit? No, she's Celtic. And, and another weird tribe that, you know, fucking yeah. existed thousands of years ago. Well, you've yeah. got to bear in mind, Irish people are the ones... I've heard from a lot of uh, Trump voters in Boston that Irish people are the ones who are really discriminated against. They were the original <laughs> slaves. <laughs> the modern Celts are a related group of ethnicities who share similar Celtic languages, culture and art history, who live in the western extremities of Europe. So it's Ireland, true. Wales, Scotland, and Cornwall, and some of France as well. And also, I think they're living like like um, Asturia in Spain yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like Celts, oh, they get around. Yeah, it's like oh, we, yeah. It's just it's just clearly thrown in there because it's like oh, we need to hire a white person for this role. Oh yeah, what's a weird mysterious group of people that are the white? Celts. Yeah, the Celts. Let's go with that. Um, the character is a Tibetan man in the comics. Really? Wow. What? Wow. That's the thing. Like people. This is the most basic defini- definition of whitewashing you yeah, possibly yeah. have. Like, this is whitewashing 101. A Tibetan man replaced by a white woman, and you try to cover it up with, oh no, it's a Celtic... No. I mean, just come on. Uh, but anyway, Cargill said adapting the character as the comics portrayed him would be realising the major Asian Fu Manchu stereotype while involving the film with the Tibetan sovereignty debate. And of course... Oh, that- I see. So he couldn't have a Tibetan person in it because of the fact that uh, that, that would imply that Tibet exists. It's a yes. good point. Yes, and of course, you know, then China wouldn't be happy. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, Ch- China should, you know, you, you can't have a Tibetan, I guess, theme in the movie. You know, there can't be t- it can't be Tibetan because then, well, no, that would mean yeah. it's Chinese. The, the Chinese government wouldn't like that, yeah. I guess. Is he orig- I wonder whether or not he actually, I wouldn't be surprised, therefore, if him going to Nepal, like, I would not be surprised if Doctor Strange doesn't actually go to Nepal in the original comics and actually does go to Tibet. Oh, maybe, maybe he does. Uh, however, um, not giving one of, I mean, Nepal is a quite a spiritual place as well, from what I can Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. And but- Bhutan as well, all of that shit. Anyway, uh, however, not giving one of the few significant Asian roles to an Asian actor would also be received negatively, Carvel said. Uh, and he compared the situation to the Kobayashi Maru, an unwinnable training exercise from Star Trek. Um, so, oh, is that the. Um, or whatever it's 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 some fucking... so it's basically just saying like it's a catch 22 yeah catch 22 yeah you can't you can't win but the thing is you can win you can just, you just yeah just don't, well you can't they can't get chinese money that's the issue you know it's like okay fine fine hire a chinese actor yeah yeah that's it yeah like they could have done yeah they could have done anything like basically even if yeah if they would have they could even have gone like japanese or whatever like just anybody who's or indian well, don't indeed. get too racist mike uh, but no they could have done indian like because indians have the whole mystic thing mm. going on there aren't any indians in this well, film yeah i mean that's the thing derrickson wanted to change the character to an asian woman but felt an older asian woman would invoke the dragon lady stereotype while a younger asian woman would be perceived as exploiting asian fetish and be a fanboy's dream girl yeah which just this literally feels like because you don't have to make them sexual at all yeah, so you don't true. you don't have to go th- 
down that path. You, yeah. But they could have if they wanted to. Like, they it, could have had Lucy Lou. <laughs> Lucy Lou's fucking 40 now, Michael. Or really? probably 50 now. Anyway, so, yeah, but that's the thing. Like, you can... You don't have to... Like, is it, so you shouldn't cast Asian women then in these roles because, oh, no, that would just be a fanboy dream girl. Yeah, or this literally cross, is, like the, yeah. like, the meme of kind of, like, SJW progressivism that you get from, like, the uh, hmm. the conservatives, but, like, unironically. Well, I, ju- I just think he's bullshitting. Because oh, yeah, yeah, I kind of agree I, with that, But yeah. the, the, the thing is, it's fine if you cast an Asian person... You know, you could say, oh, it's their Chinese, not Tibetan. You could quarrel with that. But guess what? The comics, the, the fucking comics character is a Tibetan man. So an Asian man. Cast someone who's Asian then. And when if people say, oh, it's just a stereotype, literally the comics, which you're basing this fucking movie off of, yeah, the character yeah, is so Asian. Funny. It's not, you can easily yeah, sweep that controversy. Yeah, you can easily sweep that controversy away so quickly. By like, no, th- we're just basing it off the character. What we, Would you rather have this character be white? And then that would, you know, shut up all the critics. Yeah. And then be... everyone would be like, well, obviously the character shouldn't be white. And they're like, yeah. yeah, of course, obviously. And this is just, this is just like, again, I, I think they wanted a white character specifically because, like, oh, it makes it, um, I, I guess they they like Tilda Swinton in the role. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. But anyway. Um, and it, it, they've probably made it, it made it easier for Western audiences to consume, I, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is a bit weird because it's kind of like, at the same time, I almost don't really know like who who's really sat there like like who wanted this you know it's kind of like, i can't actually imagine that there was anybody that was actually like even subconsciously more inclined to like this film because it had tilda swinton no, in yeah it. they just they just thought oh no it's better if we get a white woman playing this or a white a white person playing this role who is who speaks like in a british accent yeah yeah uh, he also wanted to avoid the stereotype of a western character coming to asia to learn about being asian which is essentially what happens, I guess. Oh, because Tilda yeah, he does. Swinton... He does like the whole Asian uh, facial hair thing. Yeah, because oh, Tilda Swinton isn't Asian, so therefore he's not learning about being Asian. I mean, again, he's if like if he just does the exact same shit, but you know, Tilda Swinton is Asian instead. I mean, is he's he's not <laughs> learning about becoming Asian more, is he? Than, than oh, yeah. he is in than he is in the movie, uh, and decided to cast a non-Asian actor in the role. Um, Derrickson still wanted to take the opportunity to cast an actress. There you go. So it's progressive. Um, and wrote the character with Swinton in mind. There you go. She wrote the character with Swinton in mind as he felt she was the obvious choice to play the domineering, secretive, etherical, oh, domineering, eh? And eg- <laughs> enigmatic and mystical. Um, there you go. The, despite this, Swinton's casting was right, <laughs> widely criticised as a whitewashing. Wow, what a surprise. Derrickson said he was pleased with the diversity of the film's cast. <laughs> in terms of gender and ethnicity, but acknowledge that Asians have been whitewashed and stereotyped in American cinema for over a century, and people should be mad or nothing will change. What I did was the lesser of the two evils, but it's still an evil. Now, that's the thing. It's not the lesser of the two evils. You just <laughs> no, cast... it wasn't lesser of two evils. It's not. Evil. And if you just cast an Asian person in this role, it wouldn't be an evil either, because literally the, the character in the fucking comics is Asian. So, again, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's bullshit. He just he just couldn't, like, basically, he was like, well, if I wrote an Asian in there, I'd have to be racist. So, yeah. like, it's like, I, I wouldn't be able to write an Asian without them being racist, so I decided to uh, just avoid writing an Asian at all. Yes. Uh, looking back at the casting in May 2021, uh, Feige said, so that was Kevin Feige, the head of Marvel Studios, so the studio thought they were being so smart and so cutting edge when they avoided the wise old Asian man stereotype, but the criticism of the casting was a wake-up call that made them realise they could have cast an Asian actor in the role but without falling into stereotypes. Oh my god, <laughs> wow, find, really? Like, literally, like, like, like it took them five years to realize they could have mind, just not been racist mind blown wow we can cast an asian actor and they don't have to do the fucking asian stereotype thing they can just be a, a normal character wow. wow crazy wow now that's the thing i i think that the thing is kevin feige and the people at marvel aren't dumb i genuinely think they would would be like yeah it's a bit of a weird movie are we gonna have people come to see it if well not 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 come to see it but you know it's gonna be weird like if um, it's it, it it might feel too Asian, you know. It might feel too weird, yeah. You know, too too Asian. We still want to make this mainstream a mainstream movie. I think that's what they were probably thinking. Uh, if I'm being cynical, and considering how stupid the casting decision was and how easily Feige laid it out, you know, they, they didn't realize they could have cast an Asian actor in a role without falling into stereotypes. Of course, that was the easy solution. But I guess you know, hey, that's um. That's uh, that, that that's the excuse they're running with, and uh, you know let's let's see uh, let's see if that happens in the future. But anyway, so the ancient one refuses to train Doctor Strange, but after convincing, uh, um, but after convincing from Mordo or whatever, she reluctantly agrees to train Strange, whose arrogance and ambition remind her of Cassilius. But Mordo says, you know, hey, we may need him if we have to fight the bad guy Cassilius, and I like that. And this is what I'm get onto my next point. 
which is, you know, in these origin stories, there has to be a villain, of course. You have to have yes. the, 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 the hero become the hero. And the the issue is, of course, these villains that have to appear, you know, for the for the hero to defeat in the origin story, they often appear at the same time as the hero. Of course, Spider-Man 1 is the worst example of this. That's always the go-to example. Yes. The same fucking night the Green Goblin and Spider-Man, you know, exist. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but actually having this bad villain exist as a reason to recruit the hero, well, that makes sense. And yeah. as, as to why a showdown in the origin story between the good guy and the bad guy would happen. And so yeah, I, I like that. It's like, oh, how do we get, how do we get the villain into the movie, and how is you know there's still a bit of a coincidence. Oh, this the time fucking Dor- Dororuma or Cassilius they're trying to destroy Earth. You know, it happens probably a few months after Strange comes into the fucking, you know, yeah, into the into the uh, into this world. So there's still some coincidence there. But overall, it's like yeah, oh that that makes sense that she probably she might not have accepted Strange into this fucking world. If he, if, if you know, Cassilius didn't exist, and because she wants Strange specifically, because she knows and Mordo knows that Cassilius can be defeated by Strange because he's ambitious and unlike Cassilius. So, the villain, the the villain being in this origin story, that that part makes sense. That's what I just want to say. That Mike, what, what do you think? No, yeah, yeah, I I do agree that yeah, having this th- that logic of why the villain there is there makes complete sense. I mean, admittedly, like in the MCU, it almost like obviously at this point. You know, you could just have a villain be anywhere at any point, any time. Like, heroes just... It, it's almost like, you know, obviously... One of the differences with the MCU is that, like, superhero origin stories necessarily have less weight to them just because it's like, oh, it's just another hero. Uh, which is, you know, obviously fine. Um, but yeah, just, just fine. Like, uh, well, no, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I just feel like... Um, it, it, it's good. They did a good job with this specific uh, this, this, this decision, specific decision. There we go. <laughs> and um, uh, but obviously, yeah, I'm just saying, like, to be honest, uh, at this point, considering there's so many supervillains and superheroes, they shouldn't be having this problem in uh, in Marvel films anyway. But yeah, yeah, they didn't have it here, which is good. Yeah, no, I, I agree. But anyway, it's it's training time, Michael. And, you know, he, he's getting better, strange at everything, learning all about this new world and you know, this part of the movie, you know, is just the basic stuff you get in every superhero movie, and especially a superhero movie where this person has to enter a new world and doesn't just have new powers. And, uh, you know, yeah. they're, they're slowly understanding things, and there's also the threats, you know, with with what's going on with the world. You you understand that. Um, I like the thing he does with the apple and the, and the time stone as well. I think that's a nice... Yeah, that's a good illustration of the power. Yeah, that's a nice concept. But there is a lot of exposition in this portion of the movie from when he... You know, from when Tilda Swinton agrees to train him to uh, when fucking Cassilius comes through um, to the uh, and tries to destroy the London, London Sanctum. A lot of exposition and a lot of terms that are said in basically in a two minute time period. We get this right. I'm gonna lo- I'm gonna read this off from Wikipedia, Michael. This is all blasted at you within a very short time in the movie. So you ready? Yes. Okay. Strange learns that Earth is protected from the threats from other dimensions by a shield generated from three buildings called Sanctums in New York, London and Hong Kong, which are all directly accessible from the Kamar Taj. The sorcerer's task is, is to protect the Sanctums, though Pangborn instead chose to channel mystical energy into walking again. Uh, that ha- mm. happens later, in fact. But anyway, uh, Strange progresses... Oh, that's revealed later. Uh, Strange progresses quickly and, su- and secretly reads the text from which Cassilius stole pages, learning to bend time with the mystical eye of Agam- Agamotto, which is yeah. the time stone. Mordo and Wong warn Strange against breaking the laws of nature, drawing a comparison to Cassilius's desire for eternal life. Cassilius used the stolen pages to contact Don, uh, sorry, Doramamu of the Dark Dimension, where time is non-existent. So did you get all that, Michael? Yes. Uh, you no, you yeah, understand yeah. everything? Now about this world, there's no... Yeah, yeah. I think they really... It was a good job of them to do this massive exposition dump. I think I got it. Yeah, the dark dimension as well. That's the thing you have to... Like, there's a lot of concepts in this movie. A lot of things. Like, the dark dimension. There's the fucking mirror dimension. There's this Dororamu. There's Cassilius. There's, like, the, the Sanctums. There's the fucking... The, the whole, like, time thing. And, you know... It's... it's there's a lot. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of lore here, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, I guess they... Maybe they did the best they could. I don't know, but yeah, I was just—I remember in the middle section of the movie, like God, they are introducing a lot of concepts, uh, and uh, very, very quickly as well. Uh, but anyway, so uh, an issue I have with this movie, Michael, as soon as they talk about Cassilius and the Dark Dimension, 
with you know strange questioning all the stuff regarding defending the world. You know, he said, "I just wanted to use my hands and all that." Uh, Cassilius, what does he do, Michael? Um, uh, after he says he just wants to use his hands. Yeah. Uh, wait, I'm just trying to remember the exact scene. Uh, the old Cassilius. So he's with Wongan Mordo, Mordo, and he's yes. like strange. He's like, you know, I just want to, you know, I'm I'm out. I don't want to be a defender or a protector. I just want to use my hands. Oh, too. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So then he like, I assume this is what you're referring to. He like suddenly appears, like suddenly yes. attacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yes, and you know, Strange somehow tra- gets transported to the New York Sanctum, which is never really explained. But yeah, yeah the whole what, thing does feel a bit like out of nowhere and a bit like kind of hectic. Yeah, a massive coincidence. They're just explaining the the, the threat of Cassilius, what he's trying yeah, to do. Yeah, and then he just shows up. Yeah. And there's Cassilius right on time. Um, yeah, so again, bad writing there. Uh, also, Strange is like, you know, I'm not a hero or a protector. I'm just a guy after knowledge, essentially. But then, of course, he gets thrust into the fight. And yeah, so I, I like that he um, he's thinking that and then fights. And because I, I was hope I was thinking, oh, I hope he he isn't just convinced to join the good guys now, um, because you know a big question in every superhero origin story is, okay, you become powerful, you you, you become super, but why do you become a hero? Because there's a difference, isn't there, Michael? There's yes. Yeah. So again, I'm glad this fight with Cassilius doesn't just convince him to become a superhero. Um, and that happens later on. But of course, uh, the Zealots then attack the New York Sanctum, killing its guardian, but Strange holds them off with the help of the Cloak of Levitation. Do you like, do you like the Cloak of Levitation, Michael? Do you think it was well, fun? Yeah, it's, it's got a cute little character to it, um, which yeah. I like, you know, it's like a real buddy of his. It's like a fucking Disney side character. You know, <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think obviously the magic carpet. Um, yes. Well, no, yeah, it feels a lot like the magic carpet. Yeah, which exists from Aladdin. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's um, again. I think when this movie came out, I remember a lot of people liked the cape thing. The cape was a major selling point. It's like, oh, Doctor Strange, he has this cape, which basically exists on its own. It's got a life of its own, basically. Uh, but yeah, so um, obviously the, the fight scenes in this movie. <laughs> what I like is the, the fight scene between Cassilius and Doctor Strange. It's very up close. If you watch the, it's it's poorly it's poorly done. The fight scene, a lot of cuts. But I like how they still use their hands, you know, like uh, it's yeah. still, like it's still they're still punching each other, aren't they? Even though they're these powerful wizards, not casting spells, they're just punching and like trying to stab each other. They don't have the concept of guns, I guess, in the wizarding world. That you know, that's still that's yeah, good, yeah, it is a bit from. weird. Yeah, like the way they do the fighting. Um, but yeah, I mean, what yeah, what do you think about the fighting as like a thing? I mean, it's kind of like it's interesting in some ways, like obviously with like the manipulating reality. I was kind of thinking like sometimes it's, it's fun. Often yeah. it's just they're punching each other, which is yeah, why yeah, I'm yeah. Not yeah. No, yeah, I was thinking like it's kind of interesting because um, obviously the scene which a lot of people praise in a that's kind of similar in a way is in Infinity War, where you see Thanos when he's like fully mastered the gems, and like a lot of people, and it's like that scene where he kind of like fights and he just like brushes them aside. And people were kind of saying how, like, it was sort of... That did a better job at showing, like, what fighting with these kind of, like, weird, other-dimensional cosmic powers would be like. And I think, yeah, conversely, in this case, it's kind of like... I don't think... I can't give this film, like, too much credit for being super interesting or, like, dynamic with the with the action. Yeah, sometimes they have some nice concepts, sometimes. But a lot of yeah. the time, unfortunately, they are just punching and stabbing. And it's like sword fighting just with mythical time swords and that, that those with yeah so they, they love to do that shit with their hands as well when they just like they do a circle with their hands that's very that happens a lot in this movie um again that's uh it's i mean you know I, I i guess it's fine but yeah just in the fight scenes they could have could have been more imaginative i guess but anyway let's talk about Cassilius michael he has a uh he has a good motivation i like when you know he says he wants to defeat you know, time itself, you know, he wants to give immortality to to all. And, you know, the ancient one is a hypocrite because she draws on energy from the dark dimension. And, you know, good or evil don't make sense. Only time is the thing that kills. I like that. That's that's, that's good um, as, as a motivation. And it explains his backstory well, or not his backstory, why he's doing what he's doing. And I think it's an interesting motivation, but it, it doesn't really lead into a theme that much, which we'll get onto later. But yeah. Um, the the uh, the problem is he's just c- kind of a boring character, isn't he? He's just yes, a boring he's villain. very boring. Yeah, again, you give him a bit more personality. It just seems like they just didn't want to give him any personality, which is not really good. And it's a standard Marvel thing of a boring villain, not much personality. This guy, he he kind of wants to destroy the world, not really though, um, because he wants to give them mortality. He he wants to fight against time, which I think is is a bit unique. You know, it's, 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 it's like I said, it's appreciated, but yeah, he's just. Just fucking evil Mads Mikkelsen. 
There's no yeah, reason yeah. He, he plays an evil character better than Mad Nicholson if he just wants a standard evil character. Yeah, that is true. No, yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I think this was like a really boring, like, because you, you don't see any of like his personal life, any of like he's just he, he is. Of I'm trying to think Give like of like all back. the MCU. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, like there's no. Um, and, you know, of all the MCU villains, I, I think he's kind of like, he's possibly even in the bottom half. Oh, well, I think no, I think he's definitely in the bottom half, yeah. I'm just trying to work out, yeah. But um, Bottom three with that yeah. one from Thor 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say Thor 2 is the other one I'm thinking of. But um, also, the other thing about it, I don't like how, like, basically, at, and this is kind of, it's jumping towards the end, but it's about the villain's motivation. Like, the way that Doctor Strange is like, oh, you should read the spell book because the warnings come afterwards. And it's kind of like, it, like, literally makes it sound as if, like, the film's just glossing over the fact that basically it's a classic like villain has this thing he wants so he's trusting some evil dark force but like obviously the evil dark force isn't actually going to help him and i kind of like that's kind of something that annoys me like when you have like yeah, a villain who's basically like oh i trust this evil dark force for, for my goals and then in the end he basically like he basically gets what he wants like literally the villain gets what's he, what he wants which is to be with the evil dark force for all eternity but then it's just like oh but it turns out that's not actually a good thing it's kind of like i don't know yeah like having the villain just like get his comeuppance by getting what he wants kind of makes you realize how like it, it's a bit dumb that that's what he wanted in the first place i think yeah yeah yeah. Like, I, it's basically just like he like literally they're, they're pretty much like hey you didn't read the terms and conditions which is <laughs> yeah a bit lame. i know it's, it's it's dumb and maybe he was gonna get a special deal um if he was with um what's it what's he called uh Dor- Do- D- dormitory no D- domadu domamu yeah maybe he's gonna be like domamu's right hand man but that's never communicated in the movie uh but anyway strange is injured during a skirmish and he teleports himself back to the hospital where palmer saves him uh and again that's a nice trick from the screenwriting I, I, I trick makes it sound like bad it's a nice job from the screenwriter to get like palmer back into the movie um, it's strange back in New York in this hospital. It's like, oh yeah, oh no, he's he's injured himself and he needs he needs surgery. Yeah, but there's a bit I of like bullshit that. with the fucking defibrillators in it. Like he's that's how you that's how you save someone. Whack the defibrillators up to maximum. Just give them a good old jolt and they come back alive. Right, that's how it works. Yeah, right? it is a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's like it's... I mean, it's implied like he it helps like his spirit fight. Yes. It's like so so like. If you want to win a spirit fight, you just electrocute yourself. That's, yes, but that's I weird. the astrophysical, you know, the physical. Oh yeah, yeah, like shouldn't yeah shouldn't be affected by it. So, yeah, yeah, it's all a bit weird. What happens to your body shouldn't affect you know your spirit really in in that particular instance. Uh, but anyway, whatever. It's a load of bullshit in this movie. That's just another bit. Anyway, so Strange still doesn't want to continue with the sorcerer's life and protect New York City, of course, and you know the ancient one. Um, you know, disagree. Well, they disagree with each other. He doesn't want to get involved in a war. You know. And Mordo thinks he's a coward, uh, and basically Mordo is proven to kind of be correct. Maybe not. I don't know. But like, like Strange is like, no, I'm a doctor. Yeah. I gotta help people. But the Ancient One sees through him basically, and uh, yeah, and and the action scene, you know, the Ancient One tells him about, you know, the uh, well, the Ancient One dies, of course, and I get, oh yeah, there was that line from fucking Mordo, like, oh, these guys are more powerful in the mirror dimension because they draw their power from the dark dimension or whatever, which is yeah, fine, whatever, fucking fine, um, and yeah, it's um. Of course, the ancient one is dying, and he t- and she tells him the simplest lesson, you know, too strange. Like it's not about you. Well, it's just not about you. Like that's the thing, and it's it's a nice it's a nice ending to the arc. Like he's so concerned about failure, so concerned about pr- propping himself up, basically. Yeah. Like oh no, don't worry, you don't have to worry about that. And I guess it's a liberating moment. It could have been more liberating because like it doesn't really affect Strange too much. It j- he just kind of moves on with the conversation. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice end to the to the arc um but i again i i think that um you know she she well she also talks about a bit about a kind of a theme which is why immortality is bad because you know what gives life meaning is death the fact that we have a finite time on earth and i'm like yeah that's a really interesting yeah. concept with of course what uh fucking mads mickelson is trying to defeat he's trying to defeat time he's trying to basically end the concept of death and tilda swinson's like no life is good because death is because death exists. Yeah, she's a bit of a hypocrite doing what she does, of course. But you know that's part of her character, I guess. Um, but yeah, they they don't really expand on that throughout the movie. You know, it's only brought up when, like I said, Cassilius fights Strange in the New York Sanctum, and that that could have been a theme they could have ex- expanded on. Um, but they, they they don't really. Would you like to have seen that, Michael? That theme expanded on a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah. Like ultimately, this film I think is really lacking, kind of thematically. Like I was yes. kind of yeah. I just didn't. Yeah, like I, I didn't really get any message from this film. 
Yeah, um, well, that's, that's apart, the yeah, one. I mean, like, that, well, that was kind of, like, yeah, a basic message, but not much. That's the one little bit of a theme, a little bit of a message. And, you know, Cassilius is against time. And, you know, there's one line from the ancient one about, oh, no, we should respect death because that's what, give life, that's what gives life meaning. But, yeah, apart from that, there's really nothing to more to that in terms of a, it being a theme in the movie. Uh, but yeah, I do like I like I said I do appreciate Stranger's character. It's a nice conclusion to to his character arc, uh, where he's like, oh yeah, no, it's not, it's not, it's not about you. It's not about you, Strange. That lets him basically become this sorcerer who's who's saving people. Uh, but anyway, so Mordo makes a good point by the way about how the Ancient One could have caused the issues with uh, Cassilius since she was a hypocrite and that led him astray. You know, why could she draw on power from the dark dimension but they couldn't? I think that was mm. a good point from him if you think about it but the problem is it doesn't really have any consequences in the movie because yeah it's kind of just like it feels sort of pointless like it doesn't have any lasting impact yeah it's just like oh yeah oh yeah that's a good point Mordor yeah she, maybe Cassilius was caused by the ancient one but there's no I mean she's already dead by that point and it doesn't really affect them in any way um, yeah yeah but that, that all that revelation doesn't affect them in any way because uh, yeah they still go to f- try and stop the, the bad guys from uh, destroying the Hong Kong Sanctum so, mm. um, so before dying, basically, uh, the Ancient One tells Strange that he too will have to bend the rules. Another kind of theme, I guess. Oh, sometimes you have to bend the rules, break break the rules or whatever, yeah. in order to defeat Cassilius. Uh, again, it's not really given that much weight. So then Strange and Mordo, M- Mordo sorry, arrive in yes. Hong Kong to find Wong dead, the Sanctum destroyed, and the Dark Dimension engulfing Earth. Strange uses the eye to reverse time and save Wong. Uh, I like what Wong says when... Um, uh, well, oh yeah, Strange goes like, oh yeah, bending the laws of nature and all that, it's it's bad, you know, and one goes, well, don't stop now. That's yeah, yeah, a, that is a fun little line. Yeah, that's, and that's the thing with these Marvel movies, they don't have to be quips all the time, just a little line like that, that's good enough, but I feel like they stray down the path of having that in every fucking seed, which is the issue. But just a little line like that, that's fine. Uh, and yeah, I of course, Strange saves the day by being able to use the time stone and there's a line earlier from Mordo which is like oh yeah how do you, yeah, you know Stranger's like oh, I'm just reading how to use this time stone from the fucking book and he's like no it requires more than that you're a powerful sorcerer you know you can't just read a book that's very advanced magic and I'm just like well you know how how does he do this strange how does he how is he able to wield this time stone it's never explained really is it yeah yeah like he just kind of gets out of nowhere um yeah yeah like i mean the thing is actually that kind of reminds me of something which i just remembered um i was kind of thinking like would is he a bit of a mary sue because like here's what i was kind of thinking about the fact that like he's able to like pycelius who's um sorry Ky- kaiselius yes um i spelled his name wrong in my notes which is why i just said it wrong there so let me correct it now so i don't embarrass myself in the future uh kaiselius is like obviously implied to be a, a real big deal like he's implied to be pretty powerful yes. and dr strange is able to kind of hold his own against kaiselius quite well and i was kind of thinking with myself, the help is... of the uh, cloak of levitation yeah yeah it. like yeah. yeah so i guess yeah although yeah so i think i think i'm probably willing to say like yeah i think the fact that like he he struggles a bit and he's kind of a bit scrappy probably lets him off uh yeah. the accusation of being a mary sue yeah, and the cloak and, does and, and, he, yeah, and he needs help, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's yeah. what I think. I, I thought for that fact, and he was like, oh, is, is he really going to go head-to-head with this guy? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, the cloak does save him, like, a couple of times, so uh, that makes sense in terms of, oh, yeah, he couldn't defeat him on his own. But, yeah, but that cloak is fucking powerful. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I, I do think there is an aspect of him being like a Mary Sue, though. You're right, because, again, he, of course, he studies a lot. That's pretty damn clear. And he's very ambitious. You know, that's why fucking, um, what she called Tilda Swinton picked him. You know, mm. so that makes sense how he would get good at it. But then, why is he so much? Say Mordo, who's been there for years and is clearly respected yeah. and trusted in this fucking camouflage thing that they got going on, he can't do that with the time stone. So it, it, it's not just about learning and yeah. ad- adapt. It's like a higher level of you know ability. And how how does he have this? That's just not explained. Yeah, it kind of feels like it's almost like there's a feeling with some of this stuff. It's a little bit like with uh, when we were talking about Aquaman 2, where it's like, it feels kind of arbitrary that Doctor Strange is the superhero. Because I remember when yeah. we were talking about Aquaman, you were like, well, hold on a minute, if like there's loads of Atlanteans, how is Aquaman even a superhero? It's just like, he's just like the guy who decided to be a superhero. And it yes. kind of feels a bit like that with this. Like, it's almost just arbitrary. Like, why couldn't it have just been like, imagine if the film was about Doctor Strange, but then it turned out that actually he's just, you know, he learns he learns to do the uh, stuff, but he's not like some fantastic prodigy and he'll never be as good as uh, Mordo. And then Mordo just becomes the actual superhero. That would have been unconventional. I mean, that would have, but yeah, again, it's I'm fine with Doctor Strange being oh, yeah. this, this this guy. It's just if you explain why he can do use the Time Stone, 
you know, somehow, some way, I don't know, go to the fucking comics for inspiration. Not just like, oh, he can do it because he's naturally good at it. Then that's just unsatisfying. And again, like you said, Michael, Mary Sue-esque. Uh, but anyway, so Strange then enters the dark dimension. This is the end of the movie and creates a time loop around himself and Doromamu. When I think of the name Doromamu, and I've kind of almost strayed to say it a couple of times in this review, I often think of the PSG and Italian keeper Donnarumma. <laughs> don't uh, we all? Don't we? No, but I mean, he's a very famous keeper, Michael. So. No, yeah, yeah, I have heard of yeah. Donnarumma. Oh, you actually have. Yeah. Obviously, he played against England in the Euro final, Donnarumma. Um, but after repeatedly yeah. killing Strange to no avail, um, Donnarumma, oh, I'm sorry, Dormammu, finally gives into Strange's demand that he, and that he permanently leave Earth alone and take Cassilius and his zealots with him in return for Strange breaking the loop. And again, I think that's a nice ending. Like they don't defeat the bad guy really; they just annoy him. Um, yeah yeah that is funny yeah. yeah um by the way i was trying to remember who the guy was like the main and it's buffon there we go because i was thinking like obviously uh don donna Ruma is uh the new italian keeper i guess but like i remember when it was buffon for ages because he retired when he was really old right has he even retired yet he may have not even retired yet you know Whoa, he's, he's like 42 or whatever yeah. but yeah yeah you're right buffon is the italian yeah, yeah. Keeper. i just he's wanted a... to yeah show off the fact that i could also remember the previous because i mostly i mostly remember buffon and yeah anyway uh no i agree with you it is it is unconventional indeed to no, have no skybeam line. michael <gasps> yeah you're right yeah, yeah no skybeam and him him just coming back and like i've come to bargain with you and hey if you let, let me go i've got infinite time here just don't <laughs> look you've got all the worlds to conquer lad you know, just, uh, just you know, yeah, it's it's nice. It's a nice uh, nice ending. Again, unconventional. And again, it's, this is what I'm saying, like, why it's somehow, of course, there are points where it's very similar to a standard Marvel movie, but points like this, where, it's very, where it differs from a standard Marvel movie. You know, the ending, it's like the third act, like, oh, you got to fight these fucking faceless villains in, in, you know, from a sky beam or whatever. Oh, no, you don't actually have to do that now. You can just, or in this movie, it's like, yeah, you you're bargaining with this, you know, super villain. Uh, and each time he's killing you, and each time you're just coming back to life until he gets pissed off. That's uh, that's not very Marvel-esque, so I enjoyed that. So again, that's another point in this movie's favour. Um, yeah, so Michael, uh, shall we conclude now? Yes, let's conclude now. You go first. Okie dokie. So, um, I can pretty much say immediately what the main strength of this film is. It is it is interesting with like the whole timey-wimey stuff. Um, and, you know, yeah, the fact that you have like this novel ending. Um, it, it is all a bit weird. Uh, and that's kind of entertaining. That is the main strength of the film. Unfortunately, I think the film does have a few key weaknesses, of which I think one... The, the number one thing, I think, is that the villain is very boring. Um, like I say, I mean, yeah, there's no way around the facts. I would kind of agree with you, probably, and quite likely, bottom three. Um, just not very interesting at all. And that that really... I think it, that has to hold, like... A superhero film that has to hold it back quite a bit. Um, I also think the plot in general just isn't that interesting. Like there weren't really any moments where I was like super invested in the film. Like in a way, like I I think you can kind of passively watch this film and be like, oh that's interesting. Oh that that's funny or clever to do that. But in terms of, like actually being infused by the experience of watching the film, um, I I don't think this is this is that great. Uh, and with that said, uh, I I'm gonna give it. This isn't gonna be a terrible rating because I think ultimately. The, the yeah the main strength of the film like i say is is the intrigue of it but i'm kind of thinking a high five uh which yeah is not is not a great rating at, at all but like obviously you can tell what's holding it back it's the villain it's kind of the not massively interesting plot not super exciting um but yeah that that's my take high five high five yeah i think there are some attention grabbing points in this movie obviously the cloak that's fun for some scenes and you know the the crazy like special effects with doctor strange you know going through this like trippy portal doctor who-esque thing i guess and then yeah. you've then you've got obviously the mirror dimension stuff which you know is fun but you know obviously that's not the, what happens in the majority of the movie you can't just judge a movie on those kind of special effects and nice moments overall i think there's a good character arc from doctor strange i, I like the character arc and that's of course pretty crucial in a superhero origin movie um there are some issues with the plots again it's very standard there are some things which make sense and other things again which we talked about which really don't make sense so yeah pretty you know generic plot from all angles really um in terms of the direction it goes and is, are there holes yes there are indeed holes um in in the plot uh and yeah the villain like you said michael is dull as well but he has a good motivation which i like um a good reason to be a villain but yeah he's just he's just dull like i said but the thing is his, his reason for being a villain can maybe lead into a theme but apart from one line from the ancient one tilda swinton of course it doesn't uh and yeah tilda swinton 
not being Asian, or not Tilt Swinton being Asian, the Asian one not being Asian is, is, is dumb, but at least the ending is unique and different, and I do appreciate that. Again, there are some aspects which are quite unique and different, you know, um, I think the, the, the it, yeah, it doesn't really feel like a, a Marvel movie in, in a lot of ways, to uh, certainly compared to like Spider-Man and fucking Ant-Man as well. This this one feels a bit different. So I appreciate that a bit. So what did you give the Michael? High five. A high five. High five. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a, uh, a seven, I think. I'm going to give it a seven. So yeah. I like it a bit more than you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, again, a seven out of ten. It's like a very, probably on the better side of the Marvel superhero movies for me, just because some aspects are not that marvel Uh But yeah, still, you like it pretty average movie overall but you know no real complaints um there with my seven out of ten but now it's time to guess michael what we think doctor strange and the multiverse of madness is going to get on rotten tomatoes so are you ready uh yes i okay. am okay so um we're gonna guess what what it's gonna get in three two one so you good to go michael you gotta guess yeah i've got a guess all right <clears throat> three two one seventy eight Oh wow! Okay, so seventy-eight. For oh wow! You. We, I just realized we did an inverse of each other. I know seventy-eight for you, eighty-seven for me. Oh boy! So uh, the thing is, the previous one, Doctor Strange from twenty sixteen, got eighty-nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Ah. So yes, and uh, seventy-eight would be quite a dip. Marvel movies don't usually score that low, uh, but you know, let's let's see. But anyway, Michael, what were you reviewing next week? Well, next week we are reviewing, and this is this is a, a relevant film to be reviewing if anybody's clued into the recent. Uh, parliamentary discourse. Yes. yes. Uh, basic instinct. Fucking basic I, I, like instinct. when I saw we were doing that, I was like, oh, maybe we should have moved that around. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure everyone would have been, you know, like who cares about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? People care about sexism in the House of Commons. Yeah, people care about Angela Rayner yeah. doing the old Sharon Stone. Yeah. yeah. Although yeah. it should be said, the reason we're actually doing Basic Instinct is not because of uh, Angela Rayner being a an, an absolute succubi, um, but rather because uh, it's a, it's like a it's like a sex demon. Um, it's oh. like a uh, I just yeah. thought you were gonna say slut then. No, I was. Yeah, I was thinking about like I was thinking about doing that, but then I thought even um, even ironic uh, slut shaming is not okay. So I decided to instead <laughs> use uh, anyway. I um, think it's fine if you people no, know it's ironic. Obviously, yeah, yeah, Angela yeah. Lorena is not a slut for yes. just wearing tights and sitting on a front. Oh, sorry, not even wearing a skirt and sitting on a front bench. But we'll get into that. Yeah. Anyway, later. yeah. So but the actual reason we're doing it is because it's the thirty-year anniversary. Yes, yes. Uh, and yeah, so join us next week for that, Basic Instinct, and then afterwards Starship Troopers, so a bit of a Verhoeven May, yes. uh, if you will. Yes, so uh, we've been selecting and reflecting on Doctor Strange because of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Manners. Join us next week for Basic Instinct. Have you been Michael? I've been Michael. I've been Luke. Thanks for listening and goodbye. Goodbye.